What's up YouTube? This is Cody here with iPhoneHacks.com and today I'm going to be showing you guys the top 22 tips for Safari. So the first thing I want to show you guys is the smart search field. So if I go ahead and open up Safari here, you'll see up here at the top it says search or enter an address and that means that you can put in a URL address or you can just type a search query just like you would if you were on Google. So this works for either or so you don't have to have two search bars, one for the URL and one for the search bar. So if we just start typing in, let's say iPhone hacks, you can see that it gives you a top hit and then it gives you some Google search suggestions as well as some bookmarks and history down here at the bottom. So it's really nice. It gives you suggestions so you don't have to actually type in everything before you can go directly to what you're looking for. Next, you can quickly type web addresses. Now, this is really nice. You can see here that if I bring this up, you're not seeing a .com button anymore on the keyboard. But what you can do if you start to type something in, and let's say we're going to type it all the way in. We're going to go to iPhone hacks, if I can spell that right. And we're going to hold down on the period, and it's going to give you all the extensions here. So if you're looking for any of these extensions, .us, .org, .edu, .com, .net, then you can just hold your finger and let go on top of that. So I let go on top of the .com and now I can just hit go rather than have to typing out .com or whatever extension you're looking for. All right, so now I'll show you the Safari Reader. So if we tap on a post here and once that loads up, you'll see up here in the smart search bar, there's actually a new button. So if you hit that, then that's actually going to give you the reader. So now you can go through this and read this without any advertisements or clutter. You can also change the text size. You can increase it or decrease it depending on what you're looking for but if we go back to the settings here and we tap on general then you can tap on text size and then you can change the size of the text right here I'll put it all the way up just so you guys can see the difference if I go back into Safari you can see that the text has gotten much much larger now if you wanted to save a favorite all you have to do is hit this share panel right here tap bookmark and then this is going to add it to your favorites. So you can see right here, this is your location down here at the bottom and you just tap save and then it's going to save it to your favorites. Now, if I go ahead and open up a new tab, you'll see that you get this grid here that shows you all of your favorites. If you want to rearrange them, you can do so just like you would on the springboard. So you can tap and hold and then you can move them around just like that. Now you can see when I added that website to my favorites, it went directly to my favorites folder. Now you can change your favorite folders if you want to do that, and you can do that by going into your settings here. Let's go all the way back, and then we're going to go down here to Safari, and then favorites. So here you can change it to news or popular. You can also change it, whoops, let's go back into Safari. You can change it when you're actually adding a favorite. So if I tap on the Washington Post, and I tap the share panel and bookmark, you can change it right here if you just tap right here then you can do so just like that. And the cool thing about Safari is it also syncs your bookmarks, including your favorites, using iCloud. So bookmarks from Safari on the Mac or on the Chrome, Internet Explorer, or Firefox on Windows will sync to iOS and vice versa. Now you can also use shared links. So if we cancel out of this and we tap on the reader button right here, and we tap on the at symbol, you're actually gonna see that you have a shared links view that show links shared by people you follow on Twitter. Now you can just tap on any one of these and it's going to take you directly to it. So if we wanted to go to this, we can tap on this and it's going directly to that Twitter link. You also have reading lists. So if we go ahead and open a new tab and let's open up iPhone hacks here and open up a post and let's say that we don't want to read this right now but we do want to read it later so what we would do is hit the share panel button right here and we're going to tap on the glasses button which is add to reading list and it's going to automatically add to that reading list so we can tap on the bookmark button right here and you can see right here at the top there is our post that we're going to read later so this is also going to sync with your iOS devices and Macs now another cool thing about the smart search bar up here is you can actually search on the page for a specific word. So if we were looking for angry, since that post was about angry birds, you can see down here at the bottom that it says on this page there were eight matches. So if we tap on it, you're going to see that it's going to highlight the very first uh, occurrence of that word. You can actually search through these by hitting this button right here, the next button, and it'll go directly through it down here at the bottom left hand corner. To close and reorder tabs, we'll just tap done here and we'll open up the tab view. You can see here that you can either just tap and hold and you can see everything else is going to go a little bit more dull and you can rearrange these tabs just like that. Also if you wanted to close a tab out, you can just swipe it to the left and it's going to close out that tab. Also you probably saw while I was rearranging the tabs, if I scroll all the way down here you can see that I actually have 
my iCloud tabs open up here. Here's on my MacBook Air and here's on my iPhone. So if you wanted to access one of those, all you have to do is just tap on one of them. So we'll just tap on this and it's going to open it right up. So let's go back to another website here. Let's go back to iPhone hacks and let's go down here to this post right here. And now you have full screen view. So when you start to scroll up, you can see here that the toolbar at the very bottom goes away as well as the URL bar up there minimizes really small. So you have a much more viewing area to read your post. Now, if you want to go back to the top, all you need to do is tap on the top right here and it's going to bring you straight back to the top rather than having to scroll all the way back up there. Now there's a few ways to actually make this, uh, make the toolbar down here at the bottom come all the way back as well as the smart search bar up here now one of the ways is just by swiping down really hard and it's going to give you the toolbar as well as the search bar up there at the top now you can also just tap the iphone hacks web address up here and it's going to bring it back as well as just tapping down here at the bottom and it's going to bring up the toolbar as well a lot of people when they start to uh, try to get the toolbar all the way back what they do is end up scrolling all the way to the top to get it back or they end up scrolling all the way to the bottom to get it back and there are quicker ways to do that just as I showed you. If you want to go into private browsing just go into the tab view here and tap on private. Now all you need to do is choose if you want to close all the pages keep them all or cancel. So we're going to keep them all and now we're in private browsing. You can tell by the UI changing to black. Now if you want to restrict websites you can do so in the settings. So if we go into the settings here and let's go to general and then scroll down here to restrictions and then you can enable the restrictions by typing in your passcode and if you scroll down here you can actually change the websites that are allowed so you can tap on all websites limit adult content or specific websites only now if you tap on limit adult content right here you're gonna see there's two options you can add a website that you'll always allow as well as adding a website that you will never allow right here if you click on specific websites only, then you're going to see that Apple has added a list of children friendly websites like Discovery Kids, Disney, National Geographic, uh, Kids, and etc. So you can add to this list if you want to by just adding a website by tapping right here and then typing in the title and the URL. Now let's go back to Safari and open up a website here. And let's show you that you can use gestures as well. So while we're swiping through this and we're reading this, let's say that we wanna go back to the main page. So if we do so, all we have to do is swipe our finger from the left of the screen over to the right, and it's going to take us back to the main page, just like that. Now you can go back to that page as well if you wanna do so, just by swiping from the right and bringing it right back. So if you're a user of Google Chrome, then what you can do, rather than actually opening up Google Chrome and copying and pasting the website, you can actually just type in, if there's HTTP colon slash slash, then this is what you're going to replace this with. If there's not, like you can see here, you're going to leave the www dot and the rest of the address, and you're just going to type in Google Chrome colon slash slash, and when you type go, it's going to open up the Google Chrome application as well as the website within that application. Also, if you make a lot of purchases with your iPhone, you'll be happy to know that you can add your credit card information to Safari's autofill so you don't have to manually fill it in every single time. Now to do so, all you have to do is go to your settings here and we're going to scroll down to Safari and you're going to tap on passwords and autofill and tap on saved credit cards. Add a credit card and then you can enter all your information right here. Now if you want to share a website, you can do so just by hitting the share panel and using AirDrop. You can see here that there's actually a device here that is uh, discoverable using AirDrop. So if I wanted to send it to them, then I would just tap on them and they would have to accept on their device and then it would send directly to them. Also, if you want to access your history, then you can long tap on the back button here and you can see this is a list of your history if you want to do that. You can do that by holding the uh, forward button as well if it was highlighted there, but it's not. So let's go back and let's long tap on the forward button. You can see right there, there's my history. So a lot of useful tips for Safari and hopefully you didn't know some of them and this video helped you out. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, then go ahead and subscribe. All right, guys, until next time, this is Cody with iPhoneHacks.com.